Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett, and on today's episode, we have our first repeat offender. That's right, Brooke Valinovich. This is her second time on The Kim Barrett Show. Now, if you have ever been confused by Instagram in the entirety of your life, let alone in 2020 and 2021, you are going to need to watch this episode when we talk about the new rules for getting followers and getting engagement and how to actually run a business utilizing Instagram. All right, so if that appeals to anything that you would be thinking about in 2021, you're going to want to watch this episode. And of course, uh, we'll give you guys some cheeky links at the end, so you have to stick around on how you can find out more about growing in 2021. But until then, let's jump into the show. Miss Brooke V, welcome back. Welcome back. First time I would say welcome back to the Kim Barrett Show. I can't believe I'm like, I, I didn't know this was a thing that you could only be on once and now I feel oh, very yeah. privileged. Everyone only gets one apart from you. You're the only one <gasps> Does that's that mean I two. stuffed it up on the first one? Yeah, look, I mean, <laughs> I think only, the only people that listened was like me and my mum. So. And my mum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like uh, we, we had to get you back to redo it. But, you know, we were prepared because even today I wore my Brooke socks. My, oh, you're wearing donuts. Socks. My donut socks. Damn it, I wish I was wearing donut socks. It's all right, one of us had to wear donut socks. At least one it? of us is on brand. Yeah, that's it. I'm on Brooke's <laughs> brand today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> now, Brooke, we wanted to bring you back because, and I would normally ask the uh, same question every single time to people, but people already know. And if you don't know, go back to Brooke's first episode, listen to that, then come back and listen to this one. But for those that don't, if someone was out there and they hadn't already listened to it, give me just the one liner. If I met you at a party and we're having a few drinks and I was like, Brooke, what do you actually do? So I teach you how to launch and grow a business using Instagram. Boom, simple. It's my one-liner. Yeah. That's my elevator pitch. Yeah. But like we're only going on a really short elevator ride. Yeah, yeah. Just like half a floor. <laughs> like, oh, cool. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Still going up to the top floor and you're like. Oh, I just say it over and yeah. over and over. That's it. See you later. <laughs> now, let's have a little bit of a chat because obviously 2020, a little bit of a um, interesting year for a lot of people. It's an interesting year. Yeah, yes, yeah, right? myself it's, included. Yeah, it, it, it tested everyone. It tested it test everyone. us, yes. Yeah, which was cool. <laughs> now, going into 2021, people looking at Instagram, and some people might be thinking, maybe maybe I've missed the boat, you know? Mm. I don't know how to do these cool real dances. I don't know how to be like, <laughs> point and dance and move. It's too hard of a move to learn. Can people still be successful going into 2021 on Instagram? Yes. Yes, yes, 1,000%. There seems to be this misinformation and like rumor at the moment where if you do not post reels dancing around in your bathers and bikinis, you just can never grow your account ever again. Well, look, I, tr I even tried doing Did it you in try it? I tried in my bikinis. <laughs> Lost 10,000 followers. Dang. But uh, yeah, so it doesn't work for me. No. But, yeah. No, I think, look, like any platform, you've got to find that fine line in between the content that your audience enjoy and actually the content that you enjoy creating yourself because mm. that comes through, the authenticity comes through there and that's what people want. They mm. want authenticity. So if you don't want to dance around in your bikini, then there's other options. One million percent, there is other options for you. Hmm. Obviously, Reels is a new feature. When Instagram introduces a new feature, it does push it out. So if we can build up your confidence in other content and then you go, hmm, maybe I'll give this Reels thing a go, then fantastic. But there's other options. Yeah, so you don't yeah. have to do it. If you really don't want to, you're like, oh, I'm not one of these cool kids dancing around. You don't have to do that. I've not danced once and my business is still growing every day. Well, hey, how do you know if your business couldn't have grown more? It's true. I mean, it's true. <laughs> look, we're going we're to split test these things, look, us marketers, no right? No one wants to see me <laughs> dancing online. Let's just get that straight. And it's so funny. When Reels first came out, I was like, I just want to make something very clear. I will not be dancing on Reels. So I'm staying true to my being my authentic self. Mm. And not doing that for the for the sake of the people. Yeah, well, I'm I'm with you as well. Everyone was like, the guys in the office were like, Kim, like get on them, and I was like, it's just not my jam. Nah, and nah. it's like because the people know it's like that's not my thing. It's like no. I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing to. But the thing to. is, as well with reels, which I think so many people don't realize, you don't need to have like multiple clips of mm. you dancing or whatever whatever it is. You can literally put up a thirty second clip of any video mm. and make yeah. that a reel. 
So if you've already got video content, and this is where I tell people to start with reels, just look through your camera reel of the video content you've got, find something with 30 seconds of value and put it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. good place to start. Yeah, I love that. And that's, I think, the most important thing is that everyone thinks that their content has to be similar to other people's content. Yeah. And it's like, oh, but this person did that, so that means I have to do that. Yeah. Right? And then... Obviously, it doesn't. It's like you can still be yourself on there. Hundred percent. So if people are now going, okay, cool. I realize now I don't have to dance in a bikini. That's cool. <laughs> What's like? Give us some of the headlines for now that we're going to be when this episode releases in twenty twenty one. What are the things we've got to be doing differently? What are these new rules you speak okay. of? The biggest one. If you take one thing away from this, post less, engage more. That's like okay. the that? ultimate. What does, what does that mean? So. People will come to me all the time and they'll say, Brooke, I'm not growing. And I'll say, all right, well, talk me through what you're doing. And they say, well, I post every single day and it doesn't seem to make a difference. And I say, okay, well, how much time are you spend engaging on the platform? So liking comments, responding to comments, responding to DMs, following new accounts, engaging with accounts that use new hashtags or different hashtags. And they say, oh, I don't really have enough time for that. Like, well, these are the new rules of Instagram. When Instagram first came out to grow your account, you could just smash out content. Mm. That's what people wanted. They wanted content. But now they want more authentic connection to the brand. They want engagement. They want to know that if I send you a DM, you're going to respond to my DM. Mm. So if you can switch, obviously creating content is still extremely important and always will be, but you need to put just as much time into engaging on the platform as you do to pumping out content on the platform. Mm, I think that's a big one. Yeah. So making sure that we engage more. So it doesn't really matter how often we post as long as we are more regular and consistent with our engagement. 100%. Okay. 100%. Being on the platform, whether that be posting or engaging, means just as much as just posting every single day. Mm, okay. Mm. All right. Awesome. So rule one. Well, that's kind of a combo of all of the rules. Of all the rules combined? Yeah. yeah. So if shall we go through the rules one by one? Oh, no, I is mean, that going to give it all away? Yeah, exactly. We, uh, let's, how many rules are there? Five. Five. Yeah. Let's do three. Okay. And then the other two, the guys will have to make sure that they go and download your guide to okay. check out the rest. Well, technically, we just covered two. Okay, cool. That's You guys have already got two. There's only one left, guys. <laughs> There's only one left. So another one, which is really, really big as well, and people, hmm, for some reason, don't seem to get the importance of this. Mm -hmm. Instagram is a platform for people to connect and engage. So you've got two options if you want to grow your relationships. Let's just talk about it in terms of relationships. So I can sit in my apartment at home. Mm -hmm. and never go outside and hope that maybe every couple of months someone comes to the door and I can try and build up a friendship with them, right? Yeah, yeah. postman or something, you know. Postman, you know, the cleaner, yeah. maybe the building manager, something like that, and like hope that we become friends. So I can do the hope growth strategy. Or I can leave my apartment and I can go to the gym and I can go to a coffee shop and I can go to places where I know that people like me hang out and I'll probably make friends a lot quicker. So that's the active, proactive growth strategy. Mm. So if we take those rules and apply them to Instagram, if you want to grow your following, you can just sit back and wait for people to come to you, mm -hmm. or you can actually follow people and engage with their content and send them a DM saying like, hey, I love what you're about, would love to get to know more about what it is that you do and offer, and you'll grow a lot quicker. So you've got to actively seek out people now. Sitting back is not a growth strategy. Mm -hmm. Hoping to grow your followers is not a growth strategy. So you actually have to take some action. Brooke, this just sounds like hard work to me. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> you got to do Talk some to actual work. Do stuff, I don't know. It, just sounds, it sounds real hard to me. It's a very different platform. Look, in 2010, 2011, even pushing it to 2012, you could just pump out content mm. and grow because it wasn't very busy. But now there's over a billion people on the platform. It's a lot of fucking content. So mm. there's enough, there's content there. Yep. People want more than the content now. Mm. I think that's very important in that different ways to interact with them. How do you, so I don't know actually if you know, I don't think I told you, but you, you know, so on Messenger, on Facebook, yes. they've got bots, they've got many chat, yes. right? They're bringing that to Instagram in Q2, I think, of 
What's Q2 mean? Quarter two. I have a Q2. Is it yeah. like a car? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They yeah. bring it into cars? Audis? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Everyone gets an Audi. When you step inside of it. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Look under your chair, Brooke. Yeah. No, so um, so quarter two of their, that's how they, that's how all the fancy technology people speak, Q1, Q2, Q4. That's why I have Q4. no fucking clue what it yeah. means. I'm not a fancy technology person See, at guys, all. See, guys, you don't have to be a fancy technology person, guys. <laughs> But yeah, so Q2, they're saying, so the basically, let's call it between April and June. Okay. They're saying that they're going to be bringing ManyChat okay. to Instagram, which basically means similar functionality. Number one, that if someone responds to you, if they have a quick question, mm -hmm. and obviously you get hundreds of DMs a day, then they can kind of get their own, choose their own answer, and they can, I, know, I want to know this, awesome, there's the answer. Mm -hmm. And then you can engage with someone. And as well, you also can build up a subscriber base so you can do a broadcast to them. Cool. So if I've got all these people coming into my messenger, uh, sorry, into my Instagram DMs, and then I go and they click on something in particular, which means that they are interested in what I have, and then I release a new ebook or a new guide, I can send that out to them. Okay. So being that that's something that's going to come, which means that most likely marketers like me are going to somehow potentially ruin DMs because marketers ruin everything. We go in and, and do this sort of stuff. <laughs> With knowing that that's coming, because obviously, like this, I want to make sure this episode is like relevant for people for the whole of next year. Okay. Unless there's anything new comes out. So, How like, it? it'll be relevant for a day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. January one. <laughs> the fun of what after we that, do. That, you just the switch fun off. of social media. <laughs> But so if something like that happens, what, like how do you think that's going to affect DMs then and the way that people interact within there? So if you're a business and mm. who knows, you might even use it because you get a lot of inquiries and, and engagement in DMs. Mm, I do. Yeah. How, like, how do you think that will – like what changes will you make to your DM approach, if any, if that, if that rolls out? I think it's hard for me because people are so used to it being me mm. that I think if I were to switch to an automated system, it would be very obvious. Mm. Can't really answer the question until it happens, mm. you know. Okay. And people say to me all the time, like, I've always been very open and honest from when I had zero followers to now that if you message me, it's me. Nobody has the passwords to my account. It's me that will respond to you. And sometimes I even like <laughs> get in fights with people because they don't believe it's me. Then I have to send a video of me like walking on the treadmill being like, it's me responding to your message. So it would be weird for me. Mm. Also, I am a control freak. So it'd be weird for me to allow something else to take over that. Mm. But at the same time, People always ask me, well, what are you going to do? You know, it's going to get to a point where you can't do it all, mm. to which I say, yeah, of course, but I'm not there yet. So mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting. Well, I mean, at least if you did use it, even if you weren't responding, you'd still be able to catch leads, right? So yeah. you're building us another subscriber base. Totally. Which is cool. And you can also then tie it to things like Zapier and stuff. So if someone goes, and you might have seen on a lot of people's profiles now, there's quite a few like big guys who've got it through a different platform, which is like, hey, DM me this word and I'll send you, like DM me book and I'll send you my new guide. Yeah. And then when they DM book, the automation that kicks in and goes, hey, here's my guide. Yeah. So you can do a little bit of that sort of stuff. So it's like almost like the custom customer support-ish type interactions. Yeah, yeah. Rather than someone's like, hey, Brooke, how are you? And it's like, oh, hello, here's my free book. Here's my new ebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, Brooke, you told me you wouldn't do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I think that's where, it. like, as well, I've got to keep it real mm -hmm. because I do keep it real. Yeah. Although I'm open, obviously, to suggestions and anything that's going to help save me time, mm -hmm. I also want people – would never want people to sort of be like, oh, she's sold out. She's using, you know, automated programs and that's not what she teaches and blah, 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 blah. I have to be careful with, you mm -hmm. know, the fine line of that. Yeah. But I'm excited to see it. Like any new feature, I'm excited to see it, see how it can work for me. And also I have a responsibility to teach my members and clients that do have bigger followings. Yeah, Here are all do. the functions and features mm. available to you. It may not be right for my brand, but it may be good for them. So I yeah. still want to and need to be on top of it so I can recommend the right features and functions for them to grow their businesses. Exactly. For some like big e-commerce type brands, if totally. they get it, then it's like, hey, like there's definitely not, no one's expecting that uh, Pete from sales is going to be uh, direct. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's Pete here. Yeah, it's like, cool. We, they probably got some automation. Yeah, that we're yeah. Into that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. And then obviously, like I said, as my um, brand grows, maybe it will be something that I need to explore in the future. Mm. But 
we'll just have to see when that happens. Wait and see, guys. Q2, send Brooke a DM and see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned this the other day, and I want to know, because obviously you talk about getting followers, so you've got to do the engagement and things like that. What are your thoughts? Because at the moment, especially being Christmas time, there are a lot of competitions, mm -hmm. cross promotions, giveaways. And I don't think we, I think we kind of maybe briefly touched on it last time you were in, but mm -hmm. especially at this time of year, what's your viewpoint on those? Love it. Love them? I'm actually teaching it this week in the social club. I think that's why I saw it in your yeah, stories yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So teaching people how to legally run a giveaway mm -hmm. because Instagram obviously has its own, you know, disclaimer. It has its terms and conditions mm -hmm. to how you can run competitions and giveaways on the app. But yeah. You know, ultimately, if you can create something that's mutually beneficial for your business to gain, you know, followers, engagement, leads, website traffic, whatever it is, and your customers get something too, or potential customers get something too, it builds up that, you know, brand reputation, it builds up that trust. And it's Christmas time. It's mm. the time of giving. Mm. So I'm totally here for it. You just got to do it the right way, like 100%. everything. Yeah, we had um, just this week, which is, I think it was, whatever the date was yesterday, 8th or something like that of December, we had... Um, <gasps> Social Club third birthday. Social Club's third birthday. That oh, was the date. There we go, guys. We had uh, Paul Getter, so at Paul from on his so his Instagram accounts he's got like 1.1 million followers he was on our podcast mm -hmm. told us a similar strategy and, and looking at it but they do some of the very big ones where they're more involved with like the the Kim Kardashian-esque type giveaways and things like that oh same yeah you know like, yeah <laughs> but got it with my Gucci bag we're besties <laughs> yeah so like I wish ones like that where people like cool you've got to pay five grand to be a part of versus doing one where you're doing stuff collectively with your like uh, local business buddies. Mm -hmm. What do you, what's your, is, do you have a different viewpoint on that or is it still the same thing? I mean, you need to decide what's right for your business, mm. ultimately. Those big giveaways where they're like, win 8 million Louis Vuitton bags. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. But also the, <laughs> those brands have a way bigger budget. Yeah. So for small businesses, which I work with a lot of small businesses, there's no point me saying to them, you need to go buy a Louis Vuitton bag and give it away to your clients. Otherwise, this isn't going to work for you. Mm. So you've got to look at the audience. You've got to look at what your business can yeah. do. Well, I mean, more so because those ones, for example, you can buy into them, right? So yeah. you can pay between like two and five grand and be a part of those. Like, does that... Oh, do I agree with that? Yeah, like if compared to doing your own giveaway where if say, let's say you and I did a giveaway, mm. similar businesses, similar audiences, and we go, hey, we're going to do a combined giveaway, follow Brooke, follow Kim as yeah. part of it versus like, hey, follow these 65 accounts that are Got part of Got what you're saying. I probably wouldn't want to do the other option because you've got to think about your audience mm. who actually has a need for the product or service that you offer. And in those kind of giveaways, they're probably not people that are ever going to buy off you or interact with you or will probably unfollow you as soon as the promotion's over, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. Yeah. So I would say, you know, for most small businesses, it would be more beneficial to just do your own. Yeah. Yeah. We actually should do that. We should do a combination. Let's do January. a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Okay. Like, I'm excited. Yeah. Guys, stay tuned. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, we'll put it in there. We'll get me, Brooke, and some of our friends, and we'll do something cool. We'll do something cool. We'll do a cool giveaway. Like the Done. ultimate digital marketing island retreat. That sounds fun. Yes. Well, we're, we, we <laughs> our goal for our mastermind is to do a retreat on NECA with Richard Branson. Oh, I'll be we've there. We've got some like contacts to get into it, so it's pretty expensive, but it's a goal. But yes, let's do let's do. Or a, you let's could do just cool do Kim giveaway. Kardashian's island that she just did her 40th birthday on. Apparently she hired that. I wonder how much she paid. But then, it's the, but Millions. she wouldn't be there. Whereas Richard Branson's island, he's there, so you can be like, "True, this is my new quite close friend, Richard Branson." If, what would if you got to ask him one question? What would it be? Sorry, I always take over interviews. No, that's okay. <laughs> I like I like when people ask me questions on my <laughs> on my show. I'll put um, you on the spot. Richard Branson, if I could ask him mm, one question. One question. So the question that I would ask him is, "Hey." This is what my goal is. This is what I'm doing right now. What would you do differently to what I'm doing? Mm. Because I like the, a lot of people go, oh, like, what's your biggest like uh, regret? Which is another good question, or your or your biggest success, or whatever. But I think a lot of people miss the opportunity when you're speaking to people who can actually make a tangible impact. It's like, well, if he said, Kim, you can ask me any question. That would, like I wouldn't just ask it when I like just come. Hey, mate, nice to meet you. Hey, would like fix my business. But um, <laughs> you know, if like if I had the opportunity and he said you could ask me anything. 
that's how I would approach it because then it's yeah. like, well, he thinks differently to me. Yeah. So he could probably come up with three or four different things that maybe I've got no idea of. Yeah. That I could just be like, cool, I'm going to take all of them. Thank you very Same. much. Same. And I think that's a really good point that you raise. People get so sort of caught up in their story, but it's like you have access to this incredible mind mm. to help your business and put the eyes on your business for two seconds. So get what you can out of that because that's a really unique opportunity. 100%. Mm. So when we go to next we'll be doing that for okay, sure. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So what would you ask him? You can't ask him my question. You have to choose your own. Oh, okay. Well, mm, I would say if you owned the social club, what would be like three fundamental things that you would do over the next 12 months to grow yeah. it? You wouldn't That's be like, hey, said. Richard, can you give me a shout out? Like right, <laughs> like right now on Insta together. Can we like, get a selfie? Can you tell everyone to follow Brooke, <laughs> at, at Brooke Vilinovich? No, I wouldn't do that. Now, I would want, uh, same as you, I would want that like strategic Feedback. knowledge that yeah. he has on my business. Yeah. 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 Totes. I love that. Totes. Cool. So is there anything else that people should be thinking about? If, so let's just say they're listening to this in the start of Jam, which I hope you all are, to set their year up for success. Mm -hmm. regardless of the algorithm changes and the new releases and features apart from engaging and things like that, is there anything that you would give to the listeners and just say, hey, guys, like, just do this this year, do mm. this? Content planning, mm. 100%. So in the social club, we do monthly content planning because if you can sit down and plan all your content out for the month, then every single day, instead of going, oh my God, what am I going to post today? I don't have anything to post. And then you post something that's not relevant or not valuable or you don't post at all. You can spend your time engaging. Mm. So if, if you can just sit down and know, okay, on Mondays we post this or on Wednesdays we post this or this is our set schedule for the month then you can invest more time into engaging and growing your brand rather than panicking every single day or every couple of days or however often you post. Yeah, mm. that would be my number one tip. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Yeah. And with engaging, what's the first step? So let's just say that, okay, cool. Because some people I think when they go, cool, I need to engage, then they're like, hmm. What should I do? Yeah, like, yeah. like how do I find the people to engage with? How do I actually find my prospective clients so that I can engage with them and then, you know, and then go from there. Like yeah. what, what's like one step? Cause I know you teach a lot of this stuff inside of the social club membership, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous as well, guys. Like, I don't know why she charges like not much money for this. You should all go and get it. If you're listening to this, we'll put, we'll put links in the show notes, mm -hmm. but what's like the first step that okay. they should do? So first step is think about and have a little brainstorm of other accounts that your customer would follow. Mm -hmm. Go follow those accounts, mm -hmm. engage with their content, have a look at the people that comment on their content and follow and engage with them as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the starting point for finding where your customers hang out online and increasing your brand awareness on those accounts on Instagram. That would be my starting point. And what about the people that go, but Brooke, they, they are following my competitors and I don't want to go and follow my competitor. What would you say to that? Well, don't follow the competitor then. Go on the competitor's account, Yeah. have a look at their posts, look at the comments, follow those people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's I like what it. I would say. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. There you go, guys. No <laughs> excuses now. Yeah, hot tip. <laughs> now, try and do, sorry, try and do like 10 a day. 10 accounts engaging with or 10 new accounts you're going to go follow? Both. Both. There you go. It's so a 10, 10 rule, guys. 10, 10. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Boom. Now, obviously, we mentioned you do some cool stuff. You've got Social Club membership, Social Club Plus, whole range of cool stuff, but you've mm -hmm. just got this new guide as well that's come out. Yes. Tell everyone what's, like, obviously, we kind of alluded to a few, like, of the hints that you've given us are in there. What, 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 what else is in there for guys? If they want to go and check that out, what else yeah. is in there? So the new guide is the five new ways to grow your followers in 2021. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is read it and apply what it says. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It will give you really, really easy and understandable things that you can action today as soon as you read it and also action every single day to be able to grow your account in 2021. Awesome. So guys, if you want to grow your Instagram accounts, you got to check it out. So we'll have the links either above or below in the show notes. So check it out. Obviously, I'm assuming the best place for people to connect with you is Instagram. Mm, yeah, it's a good start. Good start. Good starting yeah. point, Could guys. Could you imagine if I was like, nah, I don't really check it. Nah, nah. <laughs> follow me on MySpace, guys. That's uh, where it's happening. Oh my God, do follow me on MySpace. Oh my God, how embarrassing. <laughs>
<laughs> there we go. We'll link up her MySpace as well in the show notes, guys, yes. so you can uh, go and check it out. <laughs> now, Brooke, thank you so much for joining us. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask my favorite question of all mine, which Ooh. is, is there any question that I didn't ask you today that I should have? Oh, that's right. You asked me that last time. Yeah, you could ask, yes, ask me what's coming for the Social Club in 2021. What's coming for the Social Club in 2021? Okay. Apart from learning how to do that. Yeah, um, I have really long arms. <laughs> I do. They're really long and skinny. Whenever I have like photos or um, stories where my arms are up, people will DM me and be like, did you Photoshop that? I'm like, no, my no, arms that's are just that's legit. really long and fucked. Okay, so what's coming up for the Social Club? So this was one of the plans for this year. So I really wanted to do more in-person events mm -hmm. and then in-person events literally got like banned by yeah. the government worldwide yeah. and yeah. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> what do I do <laughs> like, now? Could not, go, could not have gone any more wrong because I do, obviously I believe in the power of Instagram. I think it is one of the, if not the, no, I would say Facebook is the, but Facebook own Instagram. So let's like group that together. The most powerful marketing platform in the world and I just think it's so fucking cool that as a small business, you have access to that power for free every day. However, I do believe that business is people and a screen will never replace in-person connection. So I think in-person connection and networking is just as important to build and grow your brand. And it, it when you have in-person connection, it like catapults everything that you then do on the platform too. Yeah. So it's a really big part of it. And it's definitely a big part of how I've grown my brand. I didn't just start on Instagram and then boom, have customers all over the world. I started doing in-person events and then people got to know me and the people that I still work with really closely today are people that came to like my first workshop. Mm. So it serves its purpose. So I really wanted to introduce more in-person events this year. Didn't happen, but it's happening next year. So we have a new, what do I call it? Is it a service? Are events a service? Sort of. Well, they're not a product. Yeah, kind yeah. of. So, something like that. Purvis, it's a product service. Yeah, anyway, next year called Social Club Spotlight, where mm. I have an opportunity to allow my Social Club members, four, so two from Social Club, two from Social Club Plus, to be spot lit at an in-person networking event, talk us through their business journey, talk, talk us through how Instagram has allowed them to be able to change their lives by growing their business on the platform and also an opportunity for the social club members to meet one another and there will also be limited tickets available for non-social club members who want to come along just sort of check it all out and see how it works. So that's coming next year. I'm so That's excited. Very, I yeah. am as well. And you guys, you think that she would tell her marketing agency that, <laughs> that there's all these, of all these products. <laughs> I just told Lewis, Paul Lewis, we did like 10 minutes and I was like, so this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. He was like, fuck. You. Okay, I was like, now I got to go do the podcast with Kim. We'll get back to this after. <laughs> yeah. Now I know. Now I know. So I can, now, you know. now I can think about all the plans for Brooke going into next year. But no, That's I'm really awesome. excited for that. And I just think... It's so cool because I think there's so many small businesses as well that don't really get the opportunity. You know, you, you attend these sort of seminars and events and it's always the people at like the top of their game. But I was once not at the top of my game. I was on the way up and there were events which gave me an opportunity to share my story, which helped me get to the top of my game. So I feel a responsibility now to give back to other people and allow them a platform and an event and a stage to be able to do that. So I'm excited to see, you know, the businesses that do get spot lit, where that takes them on their journey too, because I know where it took me. Mm. So yeah. I love it. Awesome guys. Exciting. So keep your eyes peeled for that as well. Obviously make sure you're following Brooke and the social club community yes. uh, on Insta. So we'll have all of that linked up so you can check those out coming in 2021. Brooke, as always, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And guys, if you know anyone that needs to grow their Instagram in 2021, please share this episode with them. Yes. Make sure that they would listen to it and hear what Brooke has to say because it's important stuff. So it is important any small stuff. business, get this out to them. Until next time, guys. Adios. We'll see you soon. Bye.